What a wonderful Friday and uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about rest and entering into rest. What is it to enter into the rest of God? You know, in many of our emails, what we are answering and what we are describing is trying to get people to rest from trying to rest. You know, we've made such a work of rest. Well, I'm just resting, you know, and uh, then we look at a situation, we find stress come into our heart, and then we say, well, I I'm just going to rest. I I'm just going to rest. And it's almost as if rest is your cognitive decision to take your mind off the situation and produce peace by your thoughts. Um, you know, the, it, it, it is not, it's almost something that you need to do. The Bible doesn't say that rest is something that we need to work up by quoting scriptures. Uh, rest is when the human being doesn't see any need to contribute anything for his mind and his subconscious mind has come to the conclusion that he has reached perfection. That is it. Now, um, if we take the true context of rest in the New Testament, the Bible talks about a rest from our works in the promise of immortality. Now, those are um, things that can really shake some Christian doctrine. But, but what I want to say is this, God has promised us immortality. So anything that you think you need to do in order to extend your life or have life or defend your life or any of those kind of things will end if you've got the revelation that you have entered eternal life and that that eternal life will manifest in you by the promise of God. Now, Rest is what happens to a person's heart in the presence of a promise that has proof and that that promise must be made by a man that has got overwhelming integrity and equity of character. Now, again, rest is when your heart goes into a place or it is the peace that you will experience, or the absence of finding a need to work anything, and it can only take place in the presence of a promise, with proof of this promise that it can come true, made by a man that is flooded with integrity and equity of character. So you need a, there's certain things you need in order to have rest. You cannot just have rest. The rest the Bible talks about is the peace that's in your heart that you own eternal life. That is it. That is the biblical terms. And unfortunately, we've had the lie that everybody owns eternal life come to us. I'm not talking about immortality or, or, or universals. I'm talking about this inherent eternal life life that everybody believes. You just have eternal life. It's just like where you're going to spend it kind of a thing. But where God has come and He has promised us eternal life and what Adam wanted to do, and I've discussed it this Sunday, is where he tried to work to have this eternal life. But if what Adam wanted to work to get could be promised to Adam and Adam could believe this, then he will cease from his works to have life. And the moment you cease from your works to have life, you find that the fruit of the flesh stops in your life. So, it sounds a bit complicated, but let me show you, share it, repeat it again, and please bear with me, it's going to help you. Rest is what you go in, when you're seeking something, let's say I'm, let's say I'm working at something, let's say I want to go on a holiday, it's like in my case, let me use my example, I wanted to go and work uh, I want to go on a holiday um, in December. 
And what would happen in a normal person's life if he wants to go and, on a holiday in December? He'll save up money and he'll do certain things and he will tell the kids, let's not take by this, let's not buy that. We're going to go on a holiday and we're saving and we're working at saving to go on a holiday. But what if somebody that you trust promises you a holiday in Mozambique on an island, all expenses paid? Are you still going to work at trying to produce a holiday by principles of saving and all those kind of things? No. Even if you want a holiday and you believe for a holiday and you confess, I'm going to have a holiday and I'm going to, you know, we're going to have this and we would have a picture of the dream island on the fridge and, and we would be in all the works to try and produce this holiday. Or even in grace circles, we put peace on the, we put rest on the fridge. And now we're going through all the motions and all the scriptures to try and have this peace or this rest. What would stop us from doing everything if what we want to attain can be given to us freely and that we can have proof that, that it has been given to us and we would know that the one who promises us this thing is of equity of character and he can bring it forth, bring forth belief in our hearts. Then we will cease from our works. If I go to somebody that's got a job and um, I say to him, listen man, you can just quit your job. Just quit your job. Do you think he's going to quit his job? If, it, if he doesn't even like the job, if the, the job is hard work, away from his family, day and night, struggling to get, you know, uh, maybe he gets good money or good promise of money or a bonus, and, you know, all of a sudden he must just work and work. What would, do you think he's going to quit his job just by me telling him, quit your job, I, I mean, just quit your job? And just take a break, take a rest. He's not going to rest. There's so many people working so hard out there in the physical because they are not persuaded they can rest because if they rest today, then they will not have tomorrow. But if I can come and show you a lotto ticket and I can show you that the lotto ticket was in your name and that you won the lotto and I can prove that to you and I can come with bank statements that proves to you that the money is in your account, are you still going to work? No. You see, rest is not something you decide to have. Rest is what happens to you in the abundance of proof of eternal life that was given to you. The abundance of proof and the promise of a man of integrity promising you that everything you ever chased for and ran after has been given to you. Now, how did God do that? This is what He did. He took a man with all the sin, and all the, all, all, every day, all death upon him, he ended the life of that man. He raised him up in a new form of life without sin, without uh, uh, fear, without death. And he put him at the right hand of the Father. And since he took your sin and your death, that life is yours. And he has taken that man, raised him up and proved that by proved that eternal life that he promises you and that you have reached it in the resurrection of Jesus and then he poured out the holy spirit in your heart by which you cry abba father and by looking at Jesus as the last word about your life and continually looking at that without trying to confess rest scriptures to rest in a situation, but seeing the fulfilled Christ or, or the fulfillment in Christ, the resurrected Christ, the immortal Christ as God's promise to you and that you have reached and attained that in Jesus, and that it's up to God to manifest that in your life. The moment you see that, and you can stand unashamed in the nakedness of your shortcoming because of the promise and the integrity of the Father that He will bring forth life and immortality in you, you will find that your subconscious mind, your conscious mind, and everything that's in you ceases to work and you enter into the rest of God. The Bible says God has sworn that without faith we will not enter into His rest. What does that mean? 
The Bible says God has finished all the works of creation. Everything that needed to be done to create something, to create righteousness, to create holiness, to create, it has all been done and is entered into the rest. He's not doing anything anymore. And He did it all for us, in us, as us, in Christ. And He said the only way man can ever enter into that is by believing that it is so that he's done it all, and that he has to do nothing to have eternal life. What happens when you enter into that rest and you cease from your works, you are ceasing from that which brings forth, which is the law system, which brings forth the fruit of the flesh in your life. You're ceasing from that, and you are wide open to the fruit of the Spirit, and you find love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, meekness, temperance, faith, faithfulness and all those things effortlessly works free starting to manifest in you and you can live a a life full of love like you've never imagined all for free. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to me today and allowing me to serve you with this good news. You are loved and cared for and this coming Sunday I will continue to speak on the rest that there is that we can enter into in Jesus Christ. Amen.